Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today we are talking about new platforms, better platforms. You guys have all been on Amazon. I don't know if I can say better at this time, right? But we're going to be diversifying. And if we do that, knew that we need to make transitions and changes. And so today I have a very special guest. Her name is... <laughs> Her name is Carrie Miller and she is from Helium 10, but today she's really going to be talking to us about transitioning into Walmart and some other places. So without further ado, please welcome Carrie Miller to the show. <laughs> My video is not starting. Sorry. Oh, that's uh -oh. fine. We always have snafus and different things. Uh, it's no big deal at all. What's going on here? Okay. I'm going to close this. Hello, everyone. Oh, sorry. Hello, Hi, everyone. Carrie. Hey, how's it going? Thanks it's for having It's going me really on. good. So <laughs> thankful that you're here today. They're spending some time. I know we always have tech snafus. It's fine. It's just life. It's Zoom. It's it's I call it the Zoom life. It's like there's always something. At one point, yeah. I had my my fire alarm going off. I've had plenty of interruptions. So we all we just roll with it around here. And there's just <laughs> that sounds <and> good. <laughs> editing fixes a multitude of things, right? So yeah, we're very good. good. <laughs> So Carrie, tell me a little bit about your e-com background. We already know that you are with Helium 10 and you're an expert in uh, bringing people into Walmart yeah. platforms. So let's just talk about how you got started in e-commerce. Okay. Yeah. So um, back in about 2015, 2016, my, um, actually our neighbor kind of approached my dad and was asking him to help out with this um, skateboard business that is, it wasn't doing very well. Right. So um, my dad started helping out and then I decided I kind of wanted to help out too. And we realized they were only selling like $200 a month on Amazon and they were using vendor central. And I was like, I think I can do better than that because I was in sales. So I, I was like, $200 is nothing. So, um, I thought, well, I can figure out how to do this. So I just went on YouTube, started learning how to sell on Amazon and figured out I should get them all the, all the listings switched over to, um, to seller central to make sure that they're not on vendor anymore. Um, so that I had more control because I couldn't really edit any listings on Vendor Central. It was really challenging. I don't know how it is now, but it was very, very difficult to maneuver. And we weren't as profitable that way. So then you can make more profit uh, using Seller Central. So I, I switched them over and started just learning how to optimize listings and started doing well with that. And then I, I thought, well, maybe I could help some other companies do this. So I signed up for FreeUp, if you've ever heard of FreeUp. I was a freelancer on FreeUp and I started optimizing listings for people. I was writing tons and tons of listings, people who were just starting out all the way to, you know, 2 million plus a month. Um, and so it was a really good experience to learn how to optimize and sell on Amazon and was continuing to help out, obviously, with the skateboards. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned that we were doing a skateboard business. Um, and then um, we started to expand into other products and, um, and we've just kind of kept growing from there. We expanded to a Shopify site. I have a Shopify site and then um, learned how to sell on Walmart. So that's kind of been my progression over the years of just selling on Amazon, then, you know, creating a Shopify site and then, you know, creating a Walmart platform too, or starting on the Walmart platform as well. So there's been a lot of talk with people saying that it's a clunky transition from Amazon to Walmart. Yeah. What what has been your experience over the years? And I know if it's changed yeah. and evolved, so we can talk about that as well. Yeah, it's definitely getting better. But yeah, there's a lot of clunky things. So I always think that if you're willing to kind of endure the kind of stresses and difficulties, then you're going to have a lot more of a benefit in the long term because, you know, yeah, it's frustrating sometimes setting up your listing. Like, you know, it doesn't always go up and you might have worked really hard to try to set it all up and then it just deletes everything and you were like, wait, what just happened? So there are some different things that are kind of clunky, but, um, you know, I do talk with Walmart. I do know that they're really improving a lot of the things. And and so um, every time I go in there, I see some improvements and, um, you know, there were a lot of improvements made to pay-per-click as well. It was just uh, almost impossible to get seen on on ads and they've made a lot of really great changes. So yeah, it, I, I do see that and acknowledge that there are some challenges on Walmart, but once you get on there, you start to realize that you're more profitable on Walmart. So even just my a product that wasn't doing well on Amazon because um, the pay-per-click was so high, I started selling it on Walmart and the profitability was higher, not only because the pay-per-click was way, way less, but then also your fees are less. Um, I got the pro seller badge, you get like a 20% discount 
on your fees and you just keep, there's all these kind of incentives that they've been giving right now. So um, a lot of people like that part about Walmart, even if they're selling less, that profitability is higher. So um, there's a lot of opportunity. So you've got to, sometimes not everything is easy, you know? So when you endure those difficult challenges, you'll be better for it in the long run. And um, I think it'll pay off. So what do you feel like, you know, what, what are some tips right away out of the gate? If nobody has ever signed up with Walmart, they've been an Amazon seller, maybe a few years having some success. What are your a few quick tips that we can tell them to say when you're doing this, be caution of this? Um, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I would say first, if you are a Helium 10 member, I do have a whole course when in the, in the members platform, it's uh, under FBA training. And we have something called Freedom Ticket 3.0. And it's at the very end. We have a ton of like in-depth how-tos. Like I show how to do flat file uploads, how to set up your shipping, all, everything that you could ever want to know. You could, I would say start there because then you kind of know the basics of it. And then as you go, you know, maybe there's things that pop up, but you'll be better prepared to kind of troubleshoot for them. Um, something that I think is kind of a challenge if this does happen is um, comp errors. And comp errors are like, if you get pesticide warnings on Amazon, like you used a, a word that you weren't supposed to. So if you know for sure there are words you're not allowed to use on Amazon, don't use those on Walmart either because okay. they, they'll put this comp error on your listing and you won't get help for like one to two months. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's really important to just do the best you can to, you know, try to stay away from those words. And if you do get a comp error, I would just kind of delete the words that you think could be iffy. And, um, and just kind of keep kind of testing it and going back and forth and re-upload, re-uploading your listing. And usually that will fix the issue. Um, you don't always have to go through the support to do it. If you can just kind of go through the process of elimination and figure out what words kind of triggered that error. And, uh, and so I fixed a few issues like that, um, by just doing that. But I think that's one thing, um, I would say to learn how to do flat files, to do uploads for your listings. Mm -hmm. In some of my videos on YouTube, I, I show, you know, just how to do it individually, but, um, a lot of times that's where the glitches occur. So the flat files, I have a whole explanation on how to do that on our freedom ticket, uh, if you're a helium 10 member. So, um, definitely worth it to check out those and, uh, it'll save you a lot of time. I know flat files on Amazon are kind of a headache, but they're actually, I mean, they're not as bad on Walmart actually. Um, they just, there's a little bit of a learning process and I think they're the better way to upload your listings. If you want to avoid those glitches. So hopefully that was a good answer there. <laughs> yeah, of course. Do you, do you feel like that there's some significant differences? Like what are some significant differences between Amazon and Walmart? Of course, there's, you know, a lot of minutia, but like, I'm talking about profitability products that sell categories that sell. Um, I know some people have stronger categories on Amazon for whatever reason, and Walmart does better in other, other categories. Can you tell us your experience with that? Yeah, there's definitely categories I think that do better on Walmart. Um, overall, I do think profitability is is better on Walmart just because of the fees. Um, I know Amazon keeps kind of raising fees constantly. Um, the traffic is about 120 million unique visitors on Walmart every month, and it's about 200 million unique visitors on Amazon. So there's still like a bit of a gap there. Something about Walmart shoppers is that they like to buy kind of their thing, their necessities. So they're going every week usually to, to get things that they kind of purchase over and over. So if you think maybe home things that they need in their home, um, any kind of home decor, even if you have something like that, those can do well. Um, clothing is starting to really pick up. I've been really seeing a lot of influencers showing Walmart styles. And a lot of those Walmart styles are from third-party sellers. So people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I found this on Walmart. Well, it's because it's a third-party seller on the marketplace. And then they get invited to sell in the stores. And, um, like I've seen a bunch of influencers. I don't know if you've seen that on Instagram, but you'll see a lot of influencers showing the Walmart, um, along with, you know, target clothes and stuff like that, which that wasn't happening before. Um, you know, electronics do well. Um, they, they go on the, a lot of people use the app. And so, you know, they're, they're looking at things that they kind of buy all the time while they're in store. Um, so if you can kind of think of things that, you know, somebody might need constantly reordering, they, they don't have a subscription like they do on Amazon where you can just auto order things, but I think that's, that potentially is coming soon. So, you know, just kind of thinking th those kinds of things, but yeah, home decor, clothing, uh, home, uh, home goods, uh, supplies, reorder things. So, um, but I mean, I have some products that are a little bit more, um, 
I don't know, niche, I guess. And they're, they're doing pretty well. So, um, it really depends. I would say just, if you're not, if you're not sure, just go ahead and give it a try. If you have the the time to do it and, uh, and just see what you can do. Cause you can do that, you know, advertising and, um, and see what happens. So let's talk about pricing and profitability for a minute. Cause you've said that more than once that, that Walmart tends to be more profitable right now. We all know that Amazon has done nothing but raise fees every six months to a year, every year. Um, I'm OG. I've been on Amazon since 2008. Um, and so I remember at a time when like it was the beginning of Amazon were pretty, it was, I called it the Midas touch days. Like anything yeah. that you could put on Amazon for sale would sell. People were mm -hmm. really catching on to this prime thing and we were yeah. like wow i can have this stuff delivered i can order anything from books to groceries to you know clothes electronics i mean it was literally a game changer but now we've been in the game for quite a decade or more now yeah. with prime um it's becoming it's starting to become more people are starting to shop around more i mean amazon was the thing i've been yeah. saying this for years i mean you can go back to like many many moons ago of um podcasting and i used to say walmart will be and maybe surpass amazon as the number one um online e-tailer once they get the logistics figured out i've always said this because they have a location on yep. every corner, every store, they have the ability yep. logistically to deliver same day or in a few hours if they can rally the troops and get the same infrastructure that Amazon tends to have to where Amazon is scrambling to build more and more warehouses and try to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Walmart already has the infrastructure. So if they put in yeah. place this, I know that eventually we're going to see a, a surpassing of that. So getting in yeah. soon is really, really important, I think. So let's talk about the profitability. Um, what are some of the standard, you know, fees that they have that that maybe are cheaper than Amazon? And then we're going to talk about the shipping because everyone that I, oh, my yeah. clients, a lot of them are like, oh, I'm scared of Walmart. Do they have the same FBA kind of experience? And what about shipping? And what about, and, and so we're going to clear up some of those so people okay. are ready to jump in okay so fees they have just a lot of incentives like you know your first 90 days you, you, when you sign up you got kind of look and see what kind of things they have going on and they might say their first first 90 days they're giving you know 20 percent off your fees or, or 50 whatever percentage off of your fees um so they do want to kind of give you incentive to get going and, and up and running pretty quickly um another thing is the fees are pretty like they were pretty similar in terms of the percentage but because they have all these kind of incentives they have not only those incentives that they offer every now and then but then they also offer if you get the pro seller badge so if you get the pro seller badge that means that you have less than two percent defect rates um you've you know fast reliable shipping um and you've done at least 100 orders in the previous 90 days so every month they kind of look back at the previous 90 days to see if you can maintain this the pro seller badge so you get um you know 20 percent off your fees if you've got that which is a really good perk not only that people filter for the pro seller badge when they're searching so you get more visibility i could see uh, a jump in my sales once i got the pro seller badge as well so um there's a lot of uh, benefits to that so i would say for that reason you know it's it's definitely more more profitable um just in terms of fees and we can talk about shipping now if you want. Yes, so are... let's talk about the shipping because I know that that's been a fear and a concern uh, for a lot of my clients is when you jump into Walmart and start selling there, what about the, do they have storage fees? Do they have the FBA kind of thing that everyone else is going on? Like what about the shipping and what am I going to be responsible for? So the shipping rates to, <clears throat> to ship products into WFS, which is Walmart Fulfillment Services, is actually cheaper than um, than Amazon. So I found that it's definitely a lot less expensive. And I think it's because Walmart has just been in the game for so long. So their, their shipping rates are just much better. Um, I will say that, you know, once your products get to WFS, it does take a little bit of time to check in. So maybe they're not as quick as um, FBA to check things in people are like oh it's taking longer than you know when i ship things to amazon for them to check it in i'm like yeah that's that it's it, there's they're getting faster and faster all the time um but you know i would say you know the rates are pretty comparable or less than you know it depends on the product um to to amazon so um they they definitely do you know once you get your products in there they do the two-day shipping so once you get that two-day shipping badge you you also get more visibility you get kind of a, a jump in your rank when you're in the wfs program so um it's it's actually moving pretty smoothly i haven't had any issues really with wfs i know maybe two years ago there were a little bit more challenges with it but um i i would say it's pretty smooth now they've got the logistics pretty well figured out for the most part so 
Awesome. I love hearing that. It's been a few years since I've been in the Walmart, um, in the Walmart game there. We did try it out for a time. It wasn't advantageous to what we were selling at the time, which I agree that there's some things, even on Amazon, there's just some things that people sell that are just like better brick and mortar, better in person or better merchant fulfilled because Mm -hmm. of their value or size or what have you, you know, whatever else. And I don't know if you know, we teach wholesale bundles here. So think uh, prescription subscription style box gift sets Uh things like that which i think are they can be advantageous any any place that you go but more people are probably searching for those things on amazon than they would be on walmart but i'm i'm a huge advocate of diversification if you Mm -hmm. have a platform to sell your products why not sell them everywhere and fulfill in one or two places so you can sell on shopify we have a shopify store as well but we don't fulfill those we either have them fulfilled by our third party warehouse or actually fulfilled by amazon we just get our orders ship them through Amazon and that's all set so why not add another platform and just cautioning people not to you don't have to add everything all at once you can test the market and see what does better on Walmart what does better on Amazon if they all do better great I feel like the sooner the better right because eventually our all of our Amazon friends are probably going to move to Walmart as well and just diversify yeah. there so all the products are, are available but I think it does lend itself to um, maybe more of those commodities those staples those things that people are ordering on a regular basis that, that they're just adding additional stuff to their Walmart cart versus like I don't know. Sometimes I feel like on Amazon, people go there to look for specific things or niche things and things like that. I mean, I don't know. I order everything on Amazon and it makes yeah. it so much easier. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But now you're starting to see Walmart. Something that's cool about, you know, when you're, yeah, your products are on Walmart, they're advertising your products in Google Shopping. I've seen my products up on Google Shopping under the main keywords. So you're not just getting Walmart shoppers now. You're getting a lot more exposure um, through Walmart. For that reason as well. So I think it's changing quite a bit. And uh, for bundles for wholesale, I think, I think that's a really good opportunity for Walmart, especially, you know, because there's just a lot less competition with pay-per-click, you'll find keywords and things that maybe you would think would have so much competition, but they just don't have the competition. Nobody's advertising on certain words. And so I've, I've talked to so many people, people and they're like, is this a mistake? Like, why, why am I not seeing any ads? And I'm like, cause there isn't they, any, there aren't any ads. Yeah. So there's just, a lot of opportunity there. I mean, there are some niches that are really, really jam packed, obviously might be a little more expensive, but, um, again, it's still worth it. And, um, maybe a lot, some people also, you know, will say there's, you know, less sales than Amazon, but that's, that doesn't mean that it's, you know, not worth it to do it. So say you get even 10%, 20% of your sales on Walmart, you're still making more money and, and more profit by doing that. Um, and some people I've talked to have even surpassed their income on, Amazon on Walmart. So it really depends on the effort you put into it and you know what you want to get out of it and just if you're thinking long term or not. So I love that. It's just like opening a second location that maybe doesn't do as well as your first location, but it still has enough traffic, you know, to bring people and bring sales. I'm all about that. I mean, especially with the profitability now with the competition lower than on Amazon, you have an ability, what I call that Midas touch few years, when you really have enough time to kind of get all of the profits before people start coming in. And then eventually, you know, we know how it is, even if it takes 10 years, um, the, the prices eventually will go up. People are going to kind of flood in. So why not open that second location, right? I, I just call it virtual locations. Yeah, and yeah. we have, you know, a place on Amazon, a place on Shopify, a place on Walmart, even, you know, if you have someone to do Facebook marketplace, even, you know, I'm all about having automation. So anything that I can kind of put in place and make sure that everything just needs regular maintenance, but not every single hour kind of care is all about where I'm at. So diversifying yeah. in there. Um, what have you seen as far as customer service so we know if you've worked at amazon for 10 minutes or 10 years seller central is the biggest biggest headache and pain that we all go through when they don't really know how to help you know some of them don't know how to help you get a lot of canned emails what is the customer service like on walmart um it really depends on kind of the area i think that walmart fulfillment services they have if if you have issues with shipping i think they're a little more helpful um, like I said, if you get a comp error, it, it's like you might get a response in a, a month or two. I actually just had a comp error the other day and it was a mistake and they actually responded in like three days, which was really good. Um, so I was actually pretty surprised about that. Um, overall, I, I mean, I'd say they're pretty good. Um, 
but yeah, I, I'd probably say similar <laughs> in general. Well, if we're just honest here. You um, don't have to be apologetic about it. We're just honest because we need to know yeah. like, this is how we brace ourselves. It can be great in profitability, but you're not going to have less customer service headaches, but we already have those on Amazon anyway. So <laughs> we're used yeah. to it. Um, I'm just, I just have deep hope that as Walmart grows and continues to change, that they will maybe speak with some sellers, learn from the Amazon mistakes and then pad their pockets that way. You know, I would rather yeah. pay extra money for extra customer service for a yeah. seller than I would like if Amazon had amazing customer service and our seller central problems were taken care of instantly i probably wouldn't complain as much about the fees rising but their fees are rising for other issues that they created themselves like we yeah. built too many warehouses and can't afford them so we just have to raise your rates like, yeah exactly um yeah. you know so I'm, I'm more apt to like pay more money even for like a dedicated account manager so you know walmart yeah. if you're listening this is what we want and if you're going yeah. to amazon so many people will jump ship if they know for sure that they're going to be taken care of yeah. a little bit better in the Walmart space. Yeah. And I think for the Walmart space right now, for just troubleshooting issues, it's not as complicated. I feel like Amazon's just gotten complicated over the years. Um, there's a lot of groups for Walmart that you can join and get help with things from other people that maybe they've gone through those same issues. And that's usually how I kind of get things figured out. I have a group um, called Winning uh, Healing in 10 Winning with Walmart. And, you know, you can ask questions there. Um, but there, that's usually how it kind of, it's kind of like the underground, you know, learning how to fix things and figuring, um, stuff out. Cause it's just, it's interesting because a lot of Amazon people are at Walmart now. So they were all like people that you'll meet at conferences. Um, like we had them at our sell and scale conference They They, um, they're from Amazon. So it's kind of interesting, but they are listening. I do talk to Walmart and I give them feedback and they do want to make things better. So they're definitely working on improving all the time. And I have seen really good improvements. So I think that is something that could be better for them in the long run too, if they, if they really get that right. That's awesome. And it's such a great use of the skills that people that used to work at Amazon coming over to Walmart, knowing all the problems and complaints yes. and the different things um, that, you know, all I always say all good empires fall. And eventually, I mean, I'm not wishing this on Amazon. I make my living on Amazon. So I'm not uh, like dissing them. I'm, I just hope you know that my audience already knows that yeah. I'm transparent <laughs> on all sides. I always <laughs> sing the praises, but we're not without problems, you know. And so um, I just hope that even as this newer platform platform is learning the third party fulfillment side of things. You know, they've obviously Walmart is a huge retail giant. They don't need help in that direction. They they have all that figured out and they have figured out how to get decent stuff for lower prices and spread it across, you know, the country. So they're already good at that part. So if they can just lean in and be even 10% better than Amazon's customer service, I would rather deal with them um, because yeah. Let's be real. We as third party sellers are really their customers. Amazon customer Amazon's making money on every direction from us. And same thing with Walmart if we go there. So I mean they're making money on our PPC and on our storage and on our, you know, cloud services, all the different things. So the least they could do is offer us as their customers, aka third party sellers, the customer service that we need so that we can continue to serve their customers, right? So I'm hoping yeah. that Walmart and Amazon are all listening and that they're all paying attention to what us yeah. we need as sellers so that, you know, we can continue to all, you know, the rising tide raises all the ships. If we can all help each other, better customer service, better fulfillment, better fees, then, yeah. you know, we can all get wealthy together. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunity for <laughs> improvement on their part. Cause I I've even told that to Walmart. I'm like, you know, if you make you can make more money if, um, you know, you make it a little more accessible with third party sellers because they're going to spend more money on pay-per-click, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's just opportunity that they're kind of missing too, of just kind of, um, cause they've, they've really focused on first party sellers for a long time. So they're still trying to transition out of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think they're, they're shifting over their focus now and, and their, their opportunity is huge for, you know, not only, making money, but helping us make money too. So it, it kind of all goes hand in hand. Right. So, exactly. yeah. It's, it's, well, I appreciate you so much coming on yeah. the show. And I also, um, 
I know that there's several places for people to find you and your expertise. And I'm also going to extend an invitation for you to come into our membership group and maybe teach okay. a little uh, Walmart yeah. stuff to our exclusive hub yeah. members. Um, we yeah. have a, a group there that, that we do training for once a month. We bring in expert guests and love to do that. So y'all, if you're a hub member, we yes. are going to be inviting Carrie in there to be <laughs> her class. Plus she has her classes already on uh, Helium 10. Tell us a little bit mm -hmm. more about your class that you offer. So we have, we have a few things. We have some free YouTube um, information that's, you know, different series that we have on our YouTube channel. So Helium 10's YouTube channel. But if you want more in depth, like how to do stuff, like how to do those nitty gritty things that are really get you and take a lot of time to figure out, those are on. Um, so when you log into Helium 10 at the very top, it says FBA training. You click on that. There's all the different courses that they have. They have like, you know, pay-per-click course. And there's one called... Um, Freedom Ticket 3.0. Okay, so click on Freedom Ticket 3.0, and the very last week, eleven week eleven is going to be Walmart, and so that's where I go in detail of how to do these things like flat files, you know, shipment creation, and mm -hmm. just managing your business, just little nitty gritty things that are in there that, um, you know, it's always good to have somebody teach you how to do them instead of figuring it out for hours. So absolutely. That's where I am such an advocate of, of <laughs> teaching, training, niche type stuff. Even if like I have literally had a revolutionary breakthrough with a five minute video before. So it's not about that. I'm all about the training. <laughs> I'm so glad you took the time to invest in that for everyone. You guys, mommyincome.com forward slash Helium 10. If you are not a Helium 10 member, you need to become one. Well, why? <laughs> because they're the best. Um, <laughs> we love Helium 10. There's so many research tools, so many things we have negotiated a discount for you. So make sure that you go to mommyincome.com forward slash helium 10. Look at all that. But specifically for Carrie's training week 11 in the freedom ticket FBA training. Yeah. yeah. Freedom ticket okay. 3.0. Yeah. Yep. 3.0. I love the 3.0. That's our system too. Wholesale bundles 3.0. We're always oh, growing. Nice. We're always <laughs> adding things. So Carrie, I know that you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. Thank you so much for coming to the Amazon files podcast. And I'm sure we'll have you on again. Thanks for yeah. joining us. Thank you. <laughs>